get started. Um, we'll call the meeting to order uh, for license commission on January 5th at 4 p.m. Absent today is the, the license commission chair, Brian Campidelli, present myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Helen Kahn. And so everybody knows we do have um, audio video recording happening. Is there any public comment? No public comment. We move on to item number three: the update on the status of the liquor license for Hao Chen Incorporated DBA Sakura Buffet. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Edward Etheridge of Northampton. I'm with Kevin Sun, who is the manager, the owner of the property on King Street, um, to give you an update. The, the property has been marketed with the license, um, but we haven't had any buyers uh, for both. Uh, we actually have considered, Kevin has actually considered selling the license separately. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Lesko has generously referred a couple people who've inquired to us. Okay. Um, but we don't have a buyer yet. We'd like to keep them together because it enhances the sale of the real estate, mm -hmm. but they're open to selling it separately. <clears throat> I wanted to ask the question if um, the list of beer and wine holders was a public record. If it is, if I could get that list, one of the things we thought about was having the broker contact the people who hold beer and wines mm -hmm. to see if anybody would be interested in upgrading. Um, at the moment it's kind of slow, but we're hoping the fall would pick things up. We have every intention of using it, we just haven't right. found a buyer. Right. Okay. So that's what I can tell you. Okay. I mean, I would think that it's public. Yeah. Who owns those licenses? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Send that to you. That would be nice. I think that would be a way to try and, and move sure. it along if sure. we could. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Um, no. Oh. We're actively marketing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you for the update. Yeah. Okay. Bye. -bye. Item number four, application for amendment to class one car dealer license. Country Hyundai Incorporated DBA Genesis of Northampton, 347 King Street. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, I'm Carla Zayak, and we're requesting a class one license for Genesis of Northampton. Okay. So this is Country Hyundai Acquired Genesis of Modern America. Okay. So there are these businesses really just a name change. Yeah. You're you want a new one or you're amending the country? We Hyundai? need a new one. So Country Hyundai still exists and will continue to operate as Country Hyundai and we're adding Genesis and Northampton on the same property. Okay. So it wouldn't fall under the same license? Well when we called and asked they said no. Called Gen no, Genesis, oh. yeah, wants it under its own separate dealer license. And because it needs its own dealer plates, it needs its own, um, to be able to register vehicles, so through the registry, when we register a country Hyundai vehicle, they have their own plates, Genesis of Northampton will have their own plates. Okay, I, I guess, right? I misunderstood mm -hmm. franchises on one license? Well, I, I think it was Gail who I spoke yeah, with. Yeah. She said that it was Country Hyundai Inc. doing business as Genesis uh, Genesis of Northampton. So she made it sound like it was an amendment to your existing class one. That, that's not the case. Unless, I guess I, I would ask you guys, unless Country so we're, Country Hyundai is saying, continuing to do business as Country Hyundai. So we're adding Genesis of Northampton. So I don't know if you can have two on one. Yeah, two franchise, two. It's because it's, it's a completely different dealership. It's right. on the same piece of property. Right. 
Okay. And so deviate under the same corporation. Deviate under country under. Yeah. So is Je is Genesis of Northampton a corporation? No. Nope. It's not a corporation. It's just a DBA. So what's its corporation? Country Hyundai. Yes. And so is the other license. It's Country Hyundai. I don't know. Except it's operating somehow as a separate franchise, you're saying, or mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, this is an interesting one, isn't it? You know, it's almost <laughs> like as if we, yeah, yeah we're separate. putting it in the building next door, but it's right. just on the same piece of property. But I know, like, for the registry, it, it's completely separate. Like, right. we need our own CBR license for it. We need our own set of plates for it. So I, yeah, that's that sounds where like a separate license. license. Yeah, that's yeah. Separate. So that's where the licensing came in. Yep. So, so there's Country Hyundai Inc. And then there's Country Hyundai Inc. DBA Genesis and Martinez. So Country Hyundai is, is one corporation with, with two, two DBAs. Yeah. OK. So yeah. Is it separate license? Okay. So, so do you need more um, paperwork? And is it's the premises the same? Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna have all that for the country Hyundai license. And can we amend the agenda if it hasn't been? Yeah, we can just advertise it. 48 hours in advance, though. It wasn't. It wasn't um, advertising newspaper. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, you can just make note of that. I guess the agenda, uh, the agenda wasn't really wrong, but mm -hmm. we just didn't, I guess we didn't have all the information. Okay, so let the record show then that the agenda item is not an amendment to the Class 1 car dealer license, but rather an additional license. Yeah, an application for an application for a new license. Yeah. Okay. And then you have everything so we can take care of that today. Yes. There will be a fee now. That's okay, yeah. Yep. Um, but I can have that ready in the morning for you. Okay, and I'll just have somebody yeah. drop off a check yeah. when we come together. Does that work? Yeah. That's perfect. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Questions? Sorry. Yeah, do we need to make a motion? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the question I will, so I think I have enough experience. So um, I will make a motion to approve the application for the Class 1 car dealer license uh, for Country Hyundai Inc. DBA Genesis of Northampton at 347 King Street in Northampton. I will second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thanks for your patience. Sorry for the confusion. No, it's okay. Have a great day. You too. Item number five, public hearing on an application for a new Farmer Series pouring permit and applications for a common victualler and an entertainment license for Artifact, LLC, DBA, Artifact, Cider Project, 34 North Maple Street, Florence, proposed manager Jake Mazur. Mazur. Mazur, hi. hi. Um, proposed entertainment, quiet indoor music only, Wednesday and Thursday, 4 to 10 p.m., Friday, Saturday, 12 to 11 p.m., and Sunday, 12 to 8 p.m. Hi. For the record, can you state your name? Sure. My name is Jake Mazur. Great. Thank you. Um, so we can discuss the project first and then open the public hearing? Uh, okay, so hi, you want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I'm the co-owner and proposed manager for our small tap room that we opened in Florence. Mm -hmm. um, we started five years ago in Springfield, um, moving to a bigger facility in Florence. Um, we use all local apples to make hard cider. Um, you know, ciders. So we're between beer and wine, and kind of the tap room allows us to highlight the orchards in the region and also what we're doing. Um, we're a pretty well celebrated cidery, won national and now we have national awards. Um, and that yeah, should be a good job for people to come and have a closer yeah. look at what we do and how we do it. Which space are you going into? Um, so in 34, I think it's a long building. Yeah. We're in units 13, 14, and 15, which is like right where the loading dock is, if you know the building. Okay. Yeah. I think it used to be a magnet factory or something called it. Okay, cool. Yeah. Great. That's a good location. Yeah, we're on the bike path. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And did you have a tap room of the facility in Springfield, or it's just it was just a... No, it was very small. Just small production. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have no further questions, so we will open the public hearing. I will make a motion then to open the public hearing portion of this discussion. 
<laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there any public comment regarding this project? O'Brien. I just like to say that as a restaurant tour, I've been doing business with Artifact. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice. Um, but that uh, you know, Jake's always been right on point with everything, uh, deliveries, invoicing, all that kind of stuff. And uh, and his record with the wagon wheel food too has always been great too. Been a customer there, so he's got some good credit, in my opinion. And, right. and I think it'd be great for Florence to have something like that, especially on the bike path. And there's not enough cider locally. I mean, I've had his cider on for oh, what, three years now, at least, or something. So you know. Great product, and, and like I said, the business side too is always handled really well too. So, okay. but two cents. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Hi. Yeah. Hi. I'm Susan Fortgang, hi. and I second uh, your opinion. I know Jake because he also owns a catering company, uh -huh. and he's been nothing but top-notch, professional, responsible, wonderful. Uh, person to do business with. That's great to hear. Thank you. Yeah, I'm also a fellow cider maker, and so I'm excited that there's more cider, cider available for our community. Right. And he uses all local apples, and so it's a support of uh, farmers and cider makers. Yeah, and drinkers. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody else? We never have public comment during these hearings. That's great. Um, That's so awesome. Yes, I know. <laughs> Um, okay, so if there's no other public comment, then I will make a motion to close the public hearing portion of our discussion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, and, and so at this time, I guess we're also discussing we discuss. the, the entertainment license yes. as well, right? It's yes. all one big thing. Yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about the proposed entertainment, the, the quiet indoor, <laughs> or indoor music that oh, I mean, we're supposed to have. We're probably just going to have a little bit of music inside the tap room. Um, like Andy said, we should apply for an entertainment license too. So mm -hmm. you know, we're not really doing any entertainment per se beyond serving people samples of cider and probably play some music and maybe have a television or projector or something. Do you mean like live music or? No. Oh, okay. That's true. It's a small space, like the okay. whole tap room is 7 plus and 700 square feet. Okay. Okay, so what you're saying is you're going to be playing music and then. Yeah, and then I, then I didn't know what to put on serving. that. Okay. <laughs> that works. And what's the volume going to be set? I'm right, I'm kidding. <laughs> 24. Yeah, don't make it go to 11. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. All right. I have no other questions. No questions. You have that. Yeah. You want to make a motion? Sure. Um, I will make a motion to approve the application for a new farmer series pouring per permit. Can I do it all at once, mm -hmm. Annie? All that. Okay. Um, and also make a motion to approve the applications for a common controller and. Uh, entertainment license for Artifact LLC DBA Artifact Cider Project at 34 North Maple Street in Florence. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Right. Item number four application for short term liquor license, building a brewing on Sunday, June 16th from 12 to 6 p.m. at 320 Riverside Drive in the courtyard for a party for beer week. Brian J. Walt license. Can you state your name for the record? Uh, O'Brien Tomlin. Thank you. So this is um, a yearly event? Yes, it's good. We started doing that. We've done a couple of kickoff parties, and this time, due to scheduling and different events that are already existing, we were going to go for the end end of it this time. Mm -hmm. um, actually, uh, not uh, appearing on the beer week calendar because we're kind of off a day by it, but sort of wrap up sort of thing. Um, a couple special releases coming out, a collaboration we did, and a new another new beer release. Uh, similar setup in the courtyard. Uh, we'll fence off everything. Um, We'll have wristbands. I've got uh, uh, people are all serve safe. Uh, we'll take an ID to the board. It's a very uh, it's noon to six. There's you know probably twenty percent are little kids. It's not a very you know it's a nice sort of family-ish event. Um, and uh, we're going to be doing uh, hopefully some uh, food there as well. Sierra Grill will do some tacos, uh, very affordably priced. It's kind of a party, and uh, we provide uh, free NA beverages too for all the kids try to sway the adults from it but we definitely go through about 60 juice boxes and <laughs> get everybody all amped up we have like chalk and stuff for kids mm -hmm. and uh set a lot of tables up we have some covered spaces places to sit high tops 
Um, get a couple porta potties, but we also have two existing bathrooms. Um, so we try to make it as a uh, family oriented and it's done by six. So it's yep. a real daylight sort of thing. And um, that's about it. Nothing too drastic going on. Yep. <laughs> you know, no right. pyrotechnics or anything. Or right. <laughs> Different license. Do you have questions? No. Okay. Yeah, you always do a really good job <laughs> with those bets. Um, then I will make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license for Building 8 Brewing as outlined in the agenda item number 6. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Good luck. I'm next. Oh, you're oh, next. All right. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, there you are. Yeah. Item number 7, application for short-term liquor license, Building 8 Brewing for June 9th from 12 to 7 at the Northampton Center for the Arts at 33 Holly Street for the Capital Campaign, and this is a wine and malt license. This is a little different. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I've been quite busy the last four or five weeks since graduations, and I set this thing up with them. They wanted uh, to have beer there. They have some food trucks and everything. And when I started to tour the property, it appeared that they hadn't really thought about anything in regards to you guys. Um, so what um, I would be doing is I had two beers there under a tent. Uh, they're going to have, I guess, the whole place kind of cornered off. Um, and uh, they wanted me to sell beer there mm -hmm. and to go with the food trucks. Um, I'll only be bringing two beers, both of them, you know, probably the lager and the IPA and, and uh, doing it pretty much myself. Uh, you know, once again, I think it's very family oriented, yeah. not a big drinking crowd thing going on. And it's just a little bit, la I mean, I've known about it for a long time, but on their end, I don't know if they were quite aware that you can't just kind of right. do stuff. Right. <laughs> so I was standing right. there going, what? <laughs> um, so, you know, <laughs> I'm assuming your way to work is I'd be taking IDs as I serve, yeah. and I could either stamp people or ban them or, or you know, do something like that. Um, but I prefer to stamp, I guess. Yeah. Um, but, um, like, once again, I don't think it's going to be, it's over at 7. I told them I could commit to maybe 5 o'clock, noon to 5, and then kind of wind down and get my right. action out of there. So, okay. um, and then, um, you know, other than that, it's, uh, I don't think they have anything else going on. So, um, mm -hmm. but there is like three food trucks I think going to be there. And it's important to me to have food as a component when I'm serving. I don't yeah. like to be just beer, you know, yeah. so, but there's a barbecue one and a couple other trucks, I think, as well, so, okay. I mean, it's, for me, it's important, so. Do you have questions? Do not. I don't have any questions either. Yeah, thank you for catching that. Yes, thank you. Um, I will make a motion to approve the application for the short-term liquor license for Building 8 Brewing as outlined in item number 7 of the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. You guys have a good rest of your night. You too. Item number eight, application for short-term liquor license, Bump Skis, LLC, DBA Bump Skis, Mobile Beer and Wine Bar for July 12th from 3 to 9, July 13th, 10 to 10, July 14th, 10 to 8 at the Free County Fairgrounds for the Northeast Balloon Festival. Hi. Hi. Can you state your names for the record? I'm James Tchaikovsky. Remember I like the parcel? No. So I own uh, Bumpski's Mobile Beer and Wine Bar, where a uh, Connecticut-based uh, mobile bar, also catering as well. Mm -hmm. We have a Connecticut Caterers Liquors license that we've been doing this our third year now. Uh, Veronica is the event organizer for the big, large balloon fest. Mm -hmm. um, from my understanding, that there's already alcohol on the premises. And right, the fairgrounds does have their own license to serve. Right. Um, and so pretty much they're giving us permission, um, since we have a sponsor, Two Roads Brewing, out of Stratford, Connecticut, to be allowed to, um, there's certain spaces on the fairgrounds where um, they don't specifically have a permit for that area, so we're allowed to have a separate entity come in and in that, within that specific space be able to also pour, as long as they have the temporary license. And since we do have two roads, uh, Jamie would be specifically working with them, mm -hmm. um, exclusively pouring their, their drinks. So. Okay. And have you done this event before, folks, please? Uh, I've done a variety of events for Veronica and okay. her entity for yep. this. Um, so we're well schooled in the area of checking IDs, yep. banding. Everybody I have is E-tip e certified. Yep. Um, and basically, I never pour because I'm always walking around making sure everything is under control. But right. uh, my main pours are about my age, about 50 years mm -hmm. of age. And um, 
too. We do this all the time. And we did have the balloon festival last year. It took place in Milford, New Hampshire. Okay. And we just decided to move it this year to a much better location. Yeah. Um, we find that the fairgrounds here would attract a lot more people. Yeah. Uh, so this would be our second year doing this specific type of event. Mm -hmm. So as Jamie said, we're very familiar with how it, it will probably go compared to some other events I've done that are a little different. But right. this, um, we do expect a hopefully a very positive large turnout. So. Great. Two years ago, I've actually done an event at the Goshen Fairground, which is okay. a balloon fest, and there was 55,000 people there that week. Oh, wow. And I was responsible for all the, well, it's just really beer, it's no yep. major alcohol for the whole place. And so I can staff up to 20, 25 real quickly, or mm -hmm. two or three. This is, a, to me, it'll be smaller because it's only one, one brand. Right. So I'm not worrying about wine, cider, and all these other things. They have their liquor license, so we're just focused on two roads brewing flavors. Right. That's what it is. So I have an eight by 16 foot trailer. It's refrigerated in the middle. On the back end is a bar area. And then I basically build an area for IDing and wristbanding before yep. they can even come up to the trailer. Okay. That's Oh, okay. Will you be serving on both premises that you will have on the fairgrounds or just one of them? Because did you say you'll be set up in two different places? Um, no, there's just one specific area where we would be allowed to be. Yep. Um, and there's specific areas, I think, where the fairgrounds only are allowed to serve, including you know that indoor area where they serve right. beer for the fair. Yeah. Um, so they would be pretty much right there. And we would be pretty much adjacent to it a little further up, um, but kind of right by the, the other beer station. So we'd just be sort of, you know, a separate tent sort of exclusively mm -hmm. promoting them as our sponsor. Does that answer? Right. Okay. Okay, great. Right. Right on their license. Okay, it's just next to the so you're serving right, it's not under the their license, license right. the right. license. Because we wouldn't be able to be in that specific area. I, for, I forget exactly, you know, I don't know the exact areas, but he they pointed out specifically where we would have to be. Right. That they don't have their license. So okay. and Veronica has specific event covered insurance and then I have specific liquor liability insurance on top of that. So okay. mm -hmm. um, so we're not relying on anyone else's insurance. Okay. And we we name each other and then also the venue cover. Okay. So. I don't have any further questions. I'll make a motion, make a motion yes. to approve the application for the short term. Liquor license for Bumsky's LLC, DBA, Bumsky's Mobile Beer and Wine Bar for the event um, outlined in item eight of the agenda. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything that we need to do now? Or? Um, do they need to do anything? Um, no, uh, you'll just have to pay for the license when it's ready. You know, I'll email you in the morning. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you very much. For right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Item number nine, public hearing on an application for change of LLC manager, change of ownership interest, and change of manager for Oxbow Wines LLC DBA provisions at 30 Crafts Avenue in Northampton. Previous manager, Alexander Feinstein, proposed manager, Andrew Bruce McCamus. Hi. Hi. Could Hello. you state your names for the record, please? Uh, Andrew Bruce McCamus. Alexander Feinstein. Hello. Yes. I'm glad this is coming to fruition for you, yes. so uh, yes. everything got squared away. Um, so, what do we need to do first then, in your mind? So we have to remove the table. Okay. So, first I'm going to make a motion to remove the tabled conversation from the April meeting. And a second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> Um, and then I'm going to make a motion to open a public hearing. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Does anybody have any public comments? <laughs> You're all set. Okay, then I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Has anything changed since you were here last? Um, no, except except the whole you know, the yeah. status of the other yep. license, which is you know is now. I just confirmed just again before coming over here that that's been uh, that's revoked awesome. or canceled, whatever they okay. whatever they call it. And do you have everything you need in relation to that? Yeah, I mean, are, is there anything in writing that you have? Uh, I just I, I did print up uh, something off 
their uh, ABC spreadsheet, ABCC spreadsheet on um, you know their list of wholesalers in the state, and so that just indicates that. Uh, oh, okay. I mean, I can print up the whole thing. I just don't want to waste the paper. So, was it was it expired? Well, I think or that's just transferred. I think you're either active in their in their ter terminology. You're either active or expired. Okay. And um, but they. The same day they issued the other one for, um, you know, the other the other company in my deal. You know, they they once that was issued, they automatically turned my status into expired. Okay, so there's no more Yankee Distribution. Uh, I, I still haven't dissolved the, the company itself, but it is not. Right. It doesn't. Okay. I'll be doing that in the next couple of weeks, but okay. it is. Um, but the, the license is no longer active. So it was transferred to a new corporate. Uh, essentially, I mean, it, or they issued one license and took another away. Okay. Um, okay. So. Mm -hmm. Do you have questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you got all our information last time. So um, I will make a motion to approve the change of LLC manager cha and change of ownership interest and change of manager for um, Oxbell Mines LLC DBA provisions as outlined in agenda item nine. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks very much. Of course, thank you. Okay, great. I'll send it tomorrow. Great, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Item number 10, application for short-term liquor license. Vision Entertainment LLC, Saturday, August 10th from 12 to 5 at the Northampton Center for the Arts at 33 Collars, Holly Street for the Local Business Day Party event, and this is a wine and malt license. Hi. Hi. I am Brenton Jenkins. And, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Hello. I am the owner and founder of Vision Entertainment out of Springfield, uh, Massachusetts. So basically what we're doing with this Hustle and Flow event, um, actually my partner, Christina, is not able to be here. She's at work right now. But, um, you know, we're just two young entrepreneurs, uh, two young, hungry, you know, individuals that are looking to host this event. Uh, I did an event back in the Northampton Center for the Arts. Have you guys been there before? Mm -hmm. I, I did an event back there for Common Capital uh, in December, and it was an awesome event. And I was just like, this space is beautiful. We would love to eventually mm -hmm. use it one day, and we think this is the right event for that. So I'll just give you a little background on kind of what it's about. Um, so basically, you know, we're it's young entrepreneurs, young creatives, artists, things like that, all coming together. There's going to be food, drinks, um, you know, uh, vendors to kind of grow their brand. You know, promote. We're gonna all be mixing and matching our brands and things like that, you know, to attract uh, different fans, different, you know, that's just how we're gonna end up like intermingling. But, you know, me personally, myself, a little bit of background about Vision Entertainment. Uh, I'm a DJ originally, but my business over the years has expanded to photo booth, uh, custom lighting, things like that. So I will have my photo booth in the event on August 10th. I will have, uh, I will be DJing there. I will have lighting set up. Um, there's kind of going to be, have you seen that like kind of second floor loft up there? Mm -hmm. We're looking to have uh, some of our caterers up there. So people we're talking to right now, um, Main Street Deli from Agawam, which I don't know if you guys have been there before, but they have great food. Seven Spices Catering, they do Mediterranean. Um, I believe they're out of Springfield as well. Fancy grilled cheese, they do like gourmet grilled cheeses and things like that. So we think that would be, you know, something that everybody loves is grilled cheese and, and things like that. Grilled cheese, back and cheese, all of those types of things. Um, and then also hot oven cookies, kind of as like a dessert mm -hmm. for, you know, uh, afterwards. But we're basically just trying to get, you know, young entrepreneurs, creatives, you know, that's, that's, that's the hustle part of it. You know, um, I was working for TD Bank after graduation, um, you know, about a year ago and I left, I ended up leaving in October to pursue my business full time. So. Uh, that's basically like the hustle part of it. You know, we're all young entrepreneurs. It, it seems like as if uh, the millennial generation is kind of, you know, moving in that direction of kind of doing your own thing rather than working for a corporation for 30, 40 years. Um, and we just want to celebrate that. We want to embody that. But also, we're young still. We want to have fun. We would like to have a good time. Uh, and so we're just trying to create a fun, safe environment for uh, generally pretty much 18 up. Um, we are looking to sell drinks and stuff, so if you guys were, you know, wondering about how we would do that, we'd be carting at the door, mm -hmm. probably come up with some sort of wristband, 
um, situation by then. I, like the only reason we aren't saying that right right now is because we already have food wristbands, so we don't want it to get kind of right. you know confusing or anything like that. But do you guys have any questions for me? I, I'd be happy to answer anything else. So we don't. So do you have your any liquor liability insurance that you're carrying for the event? So that's the kind of kind of what we're um, having a little issues about with right now mm -hmm. just in terms of we think there was kind of like a miscommunication between we filled out the application uh here and at first we had selected all liquor um and then afterwards we decided to change it to just the malt mm -hmm. and wine um and then we've also been speaking with i don't know if you guys know melissa from the northampton center for the arts she was kind of just explaining to us that all we needed was the application so we have that filled out mm -hmm. um and then we were told that by Melissa that we would be able to use their liquor liability insurance. So I don't know what, how true or untrue that is, but even if that isn't true, we have somebody like on backup ready to write us a day policy for that, mm -hmm. for that event. It seems, it sounds then that the Arts would have to make the application. Correct, so I, Christina called, who she's the mm -hmm. other one on the application yes. this morning, and she said that Melissa said that they carry a policy that covers all the hosts that have events oh. Arts. So, okay, if that's the case, then I'm, I'll need that. And then Melissa emailed me about 10 minutes before I came over mm -hmm. here saying she doesn't know what I need. And she doesn't, so I, I don't know where it stands. But okay. But it seems that if Vision Entertainment is holding this event, they are liable and are, need, are the ones that need to get the, the liquor liability. Mm -hmm. because the Center for the Arts, yeah, is the venue, but they can't be right. liable for stuff that happens at this event. Right. right. So. Yeah, so you'll definitely need that day mm -hmm. license. And um, and have you done events in the past where you've oh, had yes. alcohol served? So you've, do you, who will you have doing the pouring and so we, we uh, looked at the application was saying something about the, the TIP certified yep, yep. servers. We're still currently interviewing people for the right. We're looking at uh, a bar upstairs kind of on the second floor lot yep. and one down on the first floor. So we will have two TIP certified people by the time that this happens. This is, you know, two months out in advance. So we're still trying to do all of that heavy lifting right now so it doesn't fall us, on us at the last minute. Um, but we are still currently interviewing people yep. for that. Okay. So I think, I mean, it sounds to me at this time that it's sort of in the works, but in terms of us making an approval of the application, we would need all that yeah. mm -hmm. paperwork and all that information before we can approve right. anything. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's perfectly fine. At least, I, you know, we figured that that might be the case, but it's better to at least show up and still yep. present the idea to you rather than not show up yep. and just have that, you know, yeah. kind of lingering. So you'd need to come back either in July mm -hmm. or August. We plan on being here on July, for sure. Okay. okay, okay, great. All right, so then I guess we view this sort of as an informational. Yes. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, I hope yeah. that you guys would come out and kind of see the vibe that we've created. Yeah. This isn't our first event. Uh, last year in October, we did a great Gatsby themed event, uh, which ended up being really fun. We had about uh, 60 to 70 guests come out. And then uh, for New Year's Eve, I hosted uh, a New Year's Eve bash at Elegant Affairs in uh, downtown Springfield. Mm -hmm. um, and we had about 125 guests for that. And that's kind of around, we're ballparking our attendance for this between 100 and 125. Um, but for that, you know, there was a cash bar. We had food, I had my photo booth out in the corner. Um, you know, people came out in their outfits and dressed up. It was just a really, you know, fun, safe, mm -hmm. uh, you know, environment for everybody, so. Great. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming no and introducing problem. yourself. We look forward to seeing you in July. July, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I have what I need for the next. Mm -hmm. So, tip certified. Yep, and your liquor liability insurance. And then at that point, we would present, we would just kind of email it or present it to you, or? Um, you would, cut, yeah, how do you? Email, email is fine. Whatever's okay. easier, fax. Mm -hmm. You can bring it in. Yeah. Okay. Easier. And then you'd come to the meeting, and we would formally approve it. Right. Yeah, it's but July third, four p.m. Okay. And so, what is our what is our motion? So, to is it a, is it a motion to table, or is it a motion to not approve at this time until we receive the but required it's paperwork? It's a motion to table until we get the, the required paperwork. Yep. So I will do that. I will make 
a motion to um, table the application for the short-term liquor license for vision and entertainment as outlined in item 10 of the agenda until we receive the appropriate paperwork. I'll second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank, Thank you. you so much. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. I will see you in July or yes. before the end. Nice. <laughs> okay, item 11, approval of minutes, April 3rd, 2019. Um, we cannot do because we don't have Brian. Mm -hmm. May 2nd, 2019. Did you read the minutes? I did. They I were did long too. and thorough. Yeah, they were long. Oh, <laughs> You do a good job. That's well summarized. I will um, <laughs> make a motion to approve the minutes from May 2nd, 2019. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And is there any new business? Yes, I did get something in the mail from the ABCC yesterday about um, Nachi Union Station. Uh -huh. So they had on April, or excuse me, on March 12th, there was a hearing that was held at the ABCC because they found them they allegedly found them in violation of selling to um, an intoxicated. And this was at the platform, correct? This was at, it doesn't specify, but I'm pretty sure. Okay, I think I remember hearing about that. Um, so they suspended, they, they suspended the license for a period of four days, of which two days will be served, and two days be held in abeyance for a period of two years, provided no further violations occur. Um, but, there was also that a decision in November, November 8, 2017 um, that they ordered a four-day license suspension of which two days to be served and two days to be held in abeyance provided no further violations occur. So based on the violation that they found on March 12th, um, they violated the conditions of the two-day license to be held in abeyance. So they are now ordered to um, they're now ordering them the license suspended um, we have six days for days. a total of four days. Oh, so with two in advance. With two in advance to be um, to be held for two years. So they are saying that the suspension will commence on Monday, June twenty fourth, and terminate after close of business on Thursday, July June twenty seventh. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I spoke with Jeremiah about. A week and a half ago, he had come in to fill out a short-term liquor application that he no longer needed, um, and he said that he they were going to be um, appealing Superior Court. So, um, at this point, are we just being informed? We're just this? being informed. And then, yeah. And they'll either, because I don't, I don't think that they can pay in like in lieu of suspension. I don't they can pay a fine because of right. this second violation on top of it. So I don't so I guess we wait to hear if there's if there's anything else, but I, I don't know. On June twenty fourth, it says that the license will be delivered to the local licensing board or its designee on Wednesday, June June twenty fourth at nine AM. So I don't know if we we I don't know. Like I don't know if we wanna like I don't know what's going to happen with the with if they file in Superior Court. I, I don't know. Right. So I guess I don't know. I guess I don't even know what I'm trying to say. If I should, if we should, if I, if Monday morning comes around, I'm, I'm not supposed to call them and say, "Bring me your license," or. Oh, you mean if they don't bring it on the 24th? That and or it, like if they file in Superior Court, are we going to get notice or are we going to get timely notice? Mm -hmm. And if they file, then does that make the suspension on the twenty fourth null and void? Right, I, I don't know. Right, because I don't I don't think this has happened before. Um, at least I haven't got anything in the files. So yeah, I guess we made it out. And if if I don't get anything before that week, I call the ABC. Yes. Yeah. Thank you.